good morning doctors as a doctor it is good to excel academically but it doesn't guarantee success in the medical practice hard work sincerity and updated knowledge can bring you the success however there is a difference to excel as a practicing doctor one need to learn and follow some golden rules which we will not find in any of our books those lesson are learned from real experience of the star wars in the medical field so i dr kishor sun kuspe medical advisor aquila division of intas welcome you all for this plenary session on how to excel as a physician or specialist there are 10 golden rules which can be explained and delivered by renowned neurologist and dr bc roy awardee professor sudesh to moderate today's webinar i would like to invite dr professor satish khadelkar professor khadelkar is currently working as a dean medical faculty professor and head in the department of neurology bombay hospital mumbai he was a ex professor and hod grand medical college jj hospital mumbai his special area of interest is neuromuscular disorder he was the editor in chief in the journal annal of indian academy of neurology he was also the convener for the neuromuscular subsection in indian academy of neurology he was previously Uh, president of Indian Academic Neurology and now Muscle Society of India in 2018 and 19. He was the president of Maharashtra Association of Neurology in 2013, Bombay Neurological Association in 2015, and treasurer Asian Ocean My- Myology Center in 2017 to 20. He is the trustee and secretary for Muscular Dystrophy Society of Mumbai. He has received fellowship from Royal College of Physicians, London. National Academy of Medical Sciences Indian Academy of Neurology and Indian College of Physicians he has authored six books more than 43 book chapters and over 150 publication in various national and international peer reviewed journal in this field he is also a teacher and examiner for the dm neurology and received as a best teacher award in grand medical college and jj hospital in Two years in 2006 and 2014. Welcome you, Khadil Karsar. Now I request Dr. Khadil Karsar to take over the session and request all the doctors who will be attending this webinar to drop your questions in the Q&A box, which can be discussed at the end of the session with the consent from our moderator. Thank you. Happy learning. Happy good experience from our uh, renowned doctor, uh, Sudesh Ram. Over to you, sir, Khadil Karsar. Audio, for two sir. reasons yeah can you hear me can you hear me now yes, yes sir you are audible now yeah. yes sir yes, right. now it's audible yeah. yes so let me welcome all of you to this fantastic session and i am myself very happy to be here for two reasons one dr sudesha is a great friend of mine and he's a great neurologist and a great doctor and is perhaps the right man to talk on this subject and second is the subject the subject has also been uh, quite uh, dear to me i'll give you a little preamble and then um, i'll hand over the uh, mic to sudhi see basically we are all trained in scientific methods of medicine and when we receive our degree mbbs md or whatever it may be we are supposed to have been trained in those sci- scientific aspects supposed to have been trained in those scientific aspects but it doesn't prepare us to become a good doctor it doesn't prepare us to deal with other human beings to understand their problems to be a friend and a philosopher and a guide to them and to carry them through their difficulties which requires a completely different maturity and a completely different property and uh, there is no one other than dr sudhir shah to explain to you about this because i believe that uh, he's gone very high in that area now sudhir has been a very long term friend of mine he as you know is a professor and head of the neurology department at dbs medical college and um, he's also been one of the first people to start uh, neurology in the state of gujarat and uh, make it grow along with uh, his friends and colleagues and um, he's done a lot of social activity he has done written books he's trained students 
he's support to so many physicians when they have difficult patients and he's going to talk to us today about this very important subject as to how to excel in life as a doctor so sudhir welcome thanks for taking this topic up and uh, let's listen to you over to you sudhir Thank you, my dear friend Sandeep, for your kind words, and I wish uh, I could uh, rise enough to match your words and expectation. Actually, humbly, I feel that I have to learn still a lot from seniors and colleagues like you, and from life. While I see you almost there in your excellence, so my tribute to you, of course, friend. Let me clarify. This is a word contributed from me to our grand teachers or scholars. It's more of a compilation word. It does not impart the author, that is me, the authority. Okay. First of all, the title: How to Excel as Physicians. Although it is more applicable to medicine in its specialty, I think it is applicable to all fraternities of medicine. So the basic principles remain the same. While medicine is not only science but also an art, somehow we are taught, as Kalyanka said, science of medicine adequately in our textbooks, in our books, and schools and schools of medicine. The art part is missing, and therefore. Uh, the word beyond the books. So this compilation takes care of those things which are not in the books, which I have learned from these scholars. With all humility and gratitude, I bring to you all this precious pulse of wisdom, the art of medicine. What I learned from scholar teachers by way of their teachings, by my observations, by my conversation with them, and just by observing their behavior. And rest I learned from my own life. Before the treasure is lost, I thought I would compile them for future generations. So, what I learned from my stalwart teachers, I want to dedicate this talk to my teachers, especially my special tribute to Professor Dr. B. S. Singhal. I hope he's here, a living legend, uh, to Dr. N. H. Wadia. Dr. Frank Yasu at Houston, with whom I learned stroke, and uh, Professor Simon Shorwan at London, and of course, Professor Marsden, Professor P.M. Dalal, Professor P.U. Shah, Professor Arun Shah, and Professor Ed Dijoshi, amongst others, and so many more. So these are the people who taught me uh, art of medicine apart from science. Professor B. S. Singhal, man of wisdom, Varya, and her character, Professor Yasu, man of kindness, humanity, a living example, the time, and then Professor Shorwan, high caliber scientific research, and so on. I am fortunate to have excellent professors who are stalwarts in our field, and they talk, took all the trouble to teach me all these things. Before I start my real talk of ten jobs, ten golden rules, I would like to mention. Uh, What is the uh, excellence? This is a photograph of Dr. B. C. Roy. Uh, he is one of the examples of excellent physician or excellent doctor. Excellent person, uh, eminence based, elegance based, eloquence based, and evidence based. As you see, reputation is for some time. The character is for eternity. We have discussed healing process in short, which meant that. A physician can treat either the symptoms with chemical or can eradicate the disease, like uh, diagnosing malaria, tubercle, or can cure with a lot of expertise and prevent the recurrence, etc. And the uh, great physician, which would also act as a healer, would put his body, mind, and soul at one level, and that is a healing process. Now. Uh, the components of healing process, as we discuss, is a physician, the patient, the caregiver, nursing 
stuff and certain unknown factors like place wars and other things we are concerned today with the physician factors so we'll focus on that the draws of competency the great physician uh, you know should have advanced knowledge updated knowledge sincerity clinical judgment uh, it should be innovative curious this this three things can bring make somebody a very successful person curiosity innovation can make him you know very uh, famous and leader in the field maybe national internationally famous but the great physician requires lot of ethics compassion humility communication skill and what not while the excellent physician would require even even further than that and that is what uh, uh, we are going to discuss today so ethics is knowing the difference with what you have right to do and what is right to do and we have to exhibit appropriate professional behaviors honesty compassion care confidentiality and it should be commitment to excellence we have to be always curious and innovative these are the you know basic fundamental qualities of a great physician communication is a vital tool between doctors and patients doctors and relatives and doctor and colleagues it's a lifeline believe me and respond to a patient's non verbal behavior this is what we have to learn sometimes patients communicate just by their gestures or body language and a great physician picks up that communication with the patient and relatives should, we should do with integrity sincerity politeness but firmness with the patient is the center of all our activities patient should be in the center please don't ignore any patient in the rounds don't ignore any complaint of any patient either in opd or indoor address their concerns make their stay comfortable and instruct your staff to behave well this is also part of communication earn patient's trust and confidence always greet patients and relatives with a smile if they are happy with our attitude then they usually blame god or the karma in case of adversities you don't know which case turns out into emergency and have an unanticipated outcome so in every case we have to discuss with the patient and relatives all treatment options as per the case may be involve them in all decision making and tell them why this option is chosen which parameters you would like to monitor and what changes you will make to change management decision this is very true for many conditions of neurology gastroenterology oncology etc so be very careful even cardiology we'll go into lot little more details when you take when we take uh, golden rules the important another core competence is knowledge acquisition that there is no option to great knowledge the i see what the mind knows so we have to keep ourselves always updated read textbooks review articles journals attend conferences webinars always do research innovation make networking i think teaching is the best way to revise so we should all be involved in to teaching at some or other level knowledge based hierarchy does not believe in holidays then the next important component is clinical judgment demonstrate clinical reasoning make sound diagnostic and therapeutic decisions incorporate uh, always the cost awareness always think of uh, risk and benefit ratio and thankful that uh, we had teachers like dr katra dr masdan who taught us what is the clinical judgment part is then comes the next step knowledge and evidence based practice we should understand that there are a lot of practice uncertainty and knowledge gaps in clinical medicine knowledge is evolving day by day every other day we have a new molecule and new symptomatology coming up as for example in the current era what is information is just assimilation of data knowledge is coming through discussion and participation 
while wisdom is the nectar that comes through experience, it's a distillation. So we have to integrate evidence into decision making in our clinical practice. We have to keep ourselves continuously updated. It's very important the bearing next slide. See, when we are confronted with a patient in OPD or IPD, sometimes we, some of us have a tendency to wait for all the reports to come and to make a complete puzzle and then only offer the treatment. It is not so. Use the formula P is equal to 40 to 70 in which P stands for the probability of success and the numbers indicate the percentage of information acquired. So once the information is in the range of 40 to 70, the data is about in this range, you can start with the gut and start treatment. Once you get more clinical data, more observation, more uh, reports, I think we can change the further course of action. Excessive delays in the name of information gathering statistics breeds the paralysis of analysis. Procrastination in the name of reducing risk actually increases the risk. So we have to be very careful. We have to be practical in this. And Dr. Singhal is one person who taught this very meticulously. Understand the case principle. Keep it simple, stupid. You know, cut to argument, debate and doubt and make it very simple. The decisions should be crisp and clear and they should be non-tentative and non-ambiguous. A solution, everybody can understand. That is what we should do. Whatever is going through our mind, five, seven differential diagnoses, we can't go on discussing with the relatives and patients and confuse them. Our actions should be with unwavering firmness and consistency. So characteristic of great physicians so far is we have curiosity, compassion, commitment, calmness. And I think neurologists amongst many other branches are well prepared to take on about challenges. We have to be curious about patient stories. We don't have cures for many disorders. So we have to be compassionate and provide the best care. Finally, we must be committed. There is never a time when we say there is nothing we can do. So that is the, you know, that is how a great physician evolves. So if I devise, it draws on competencies, knowledge, sincerity, clinical judgment, hard work, innovation, curiosity, ethics, compassion, communication, etc. Now I go into the little finer aspects of the whole thing. And that is law of success. In a brain-based economy, the best assets are people. In, a, in this present era, you know, we have to make a team building kind of thing. We have to take the leadership. Only by attracting the best people will you accomplish the great deeds. Team building is vital for professionalism. There are so many subspecialities in so many branches. So unless you have a team, you cannot be successful. Create an environment, you become a great leader where the best, the brightest and the most creative people are attracted. Then retain them, unleash their potentials and give them chance. So this is the call law of people, which is now vital uh, to, you know, for the journey of uh, becoming a, a excellent physician. And another important quality before we go for the final part, that is the 10 golden rules. I think uh, during my conversation with Dr. Marston, I asked him once, sir, in this small age of 56, then he was 56 when I was studying with him, how could you prevent, how could you pre make so many uh, monograms and such, how could you contribute such a vast literature? And then what he said was uh, something amazing. It changed my life. He said, Dr. Shah, respect time and time will respect you. He said, do only those things that you only can do or you enjoy doing. Therefore, as per his advice, I kept the driver and for the last 32 years, driver drives for me because I don't enjoy driving. And those 40 to 50 minutes every day, I do communication, my meals, and then the rest of the time I write I create, I do a lot of uh, other things for, you know, my articles, etc. So this is how we can uh, add life to our years. Decide on whom to meet, why to meet, where to meet and how long to meet. Can't allow people to intrude in your life recklessly and disturb you. It is for friends, most welcome. 
a man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of time that is what he used to say so now we go for the 10 golden rules of achieving excellence with this fundamental background which is very necessary to understand the further rules medicine is not only a science but also an art this is what dr william osler the all time great physician told and this is the art part that we are now taking i reiterate the successful medical practice may not be dependent on academic excellence that there is no substitute to knowledge sincerity honesty and hard work i i must mention that again and who is more blatant example than professor wadia the first rule the patient is and should be the center of all our activity this is part of fundamental ethics just focus on good health outcome all other aspects are secondary please do not adulterate with sharing while treating a patient if you have something that what i will gain from this patient or how will i benefit my other colleagues then you are finished the law of healing says that you just focus on good health outcome of the patient how best i may help this patient from all angles and that will impart you grace the doctor patient relationship forms one of the fund foundation of medical ethics and healing process the patient is the center of all activities you are not the center nobody else is in the center patient is the center of all activity therefore i will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required avoiding those twin traps of over treatment and therapeutic nihilism i'll prevent disease whenever i can and for prevention is preferable to cure is very important one of the prime duties of a physician is to educate masses not to take medicine these are the quotes of dr william osler so this is this should be the fundamental thing a part of it is when putting you first for the patient what does it mean patient feels safe patient feels cared for and patients feel confident in the treatment so that is what we have to give to the patient the second important rule is talk less listen more and i think i must salute professor singhal who, who is the epitome of all this. really he is living on this thing and teaching us he is a man of few words he listens he always tells listen listen patient is telling you diagnosis make appropriate gestures be a great listener you your sense of hearing has three components here then listen what is beyond hearing and comprehend it. that means what is beyond listening why what why and how etc etc see observe and visualize always make eye contact while talking to the patient don't look at the whatsapp and internet just make eye contact make appropriate gestures these are the finest arts of medicine answer their questions very patiently educate them counsel them if required put a gentle touch on the shoulder and say don't worry communicate effectively of single uses very few words very simple words very gentle words proper body language lean forward don't tell in a hurry and just go away give them time to digest take sufficient pauses and let this be a dialogue not a monologue this is the art of communication dr yasu used to tell me that patient always wants extra it's a normal psychology he will always compare with the previous doctor that what this doctor is giving me more what extra you can give in terms of quality time care education patient listening what material you are giving what prevention tips you can give if the patient is deserving you can offer which place gives concession in test etc whatever little more than others in the conversation with the patient the time is uh, like this d upon p is 30 by 70 doctor would interact for 30% while 70% is the patient speaks that is the time next is please do not turn down the third golden rule please don't turn down the patient or relatives or any old doctor 
role as a healer is humility and compassion, core qualities. Always say the truth, but in a present manner. I am reminded of an incident where I was a registrar at KEM hospital and I had to go to Dr. Nadir Barucha's uh, consulting room. While I knocked the door and entered the door, I saw he was trying to remove the shoes and socks of an elderly person and he very gently put him on the bed. Now, this is what is compassion and humility. This is what we have to learn. I also remember my Madam Dr. Piyusha always used to tell, remember that there is art to medicine as well as science and warmth, sympathy and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or canister. So compassion, care and helping nature defines a specialist. Patient is always right. Whenever in a clinical decision making, you have clinical data and research evidence and we are forgetting the patient values. Always incorporate patient values for optimal disease and that is what is important. Patient is always right. Please don't turn down. Do not deny investigation if the patient or the referring doctor demands. Try to rationalize, convince them and then omit if the demand is irrelevant. If somebody is asking uh, brain scan for a case of myopathy, I think it is irrelevant, but to very gently explain them. When does the problem start? The problem may start when your attitude is arrogant You're, and you are saying one of the following, this is not my job, I am too busy, patient is too demanding, you are asking stupid things. This is the genesis of the problem, please avoid by all means. Then the next rule is never cut corners due to time and money. About two factors are common drivers for cutting the corners in medical practice. Doctors should be rewarded for quality care, not for cutting corners. I'll explain. You're, you will be judged by the outcome and not by efforts. Focus can truly change everything. Now it is said that you know energy flows when the attention goes. So. When you focus on something, it expands. If you are focusing on time or money, I I have only this much minutes or this the patient has this much money. I mean, your outcome will be, you know, disturbed. It will be adulterated. It is necessary to understand why focus is so important. So can you can use it for your advantage? Don't focus first on patient's finance. First, manage the decision. Offer. If patient does not have much money, you can offer them that, okay, you can't afford, let us uh, check whether this general hospital is available. I can write a note for you, etc., etc. But don't start with the finance and then turn down. Another important thing, this is my cheat case, Pranas, this is don't discriminate between the patients. All patients are same and that is the height of compassion. Always remember, it is not the fever chart or cancerous growth that has to be treated, but a sick human being, ailing human being in front of you. So that much compassion and love we should have. So a good physician, Dr. Osler wrote this sentence, a good physician treats the disease, but the best physician treats the patient who has the disease. One's illness is not confined to oneself, but may affect the person's family and economic stability. So we have to take care and account all these things while taking the final judgments. And so our responsibility also includes these related problems when providing adequate care to the sick. Then I would say never hesitate in referring to an expert for second opinion. Don't hold on the patient. I'll not be ashamed to say I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. In the interest of well-being of the patient or for having a different viewpoint and learning also, there are so many reasons why you refer to a colleague. In the interest of well-being of the patient or a different viewpoint or real diagnostic aspect or learning or sharing responsibility, you should not hesitate. Offer. Invasive things, investigation and procedure if needed, but let the expert do it for you or take opinion for that also. It's very okay to say, no, I don't know. Many a times I, come, I, I confess to the patient, I don't know. And that's not a wrong thing. Don't, at the same time, don't be afraid to challenge experts. Learn from experts, observe them, seek them out as mentors or partners. But remember that even the experts may have leveled out 
in terms of his or her learning. Because success does not come from blind obedience. You know, you don't have a yes man and become redundant and no. Good leadership encourages evolution of every person. Then very important clause, do not criticize your colleagues or doctors from other medicinal systems. These things are classically absent from our standard scientific textbook. That is why I am giving all this information which I receive, wisdom which I receive. Do not break trust or faith of your patient on a doctor or medicinal system. For there is no crime as big as uh, breaking someone's faith or confidence. You know, to break someone's faith or confidence is one of the biggest crime that I would understand. Maybe faith of religion or faith on doctor. You may give your opinion, but in a presentable manner. Sometimes people ask me, sir, I'm taking Ayurvedic medicine. What do you think? I say, I don't know much about Ayurveda. Or if I may say that, you know, uh, if you are, it is herbal medicine, you may take, but I don't know the interaction, etc. Sometimes people ask if doctor, previous doctor has given this, is it okay? I would very politely say them that because I was not present during that point of time, so I can't opine, etc. Et Always work in a cooperative way. Constructive criticism can be beneficial to all. But forget, do not criticize your colleague. It is only human nature to want to present ourselves to our patients as the expert in a given area. The doctor, as if we are the doctor with the best chance of making them better, kind of ego. But the recent study published in Journal of Internal Medicine, and then they were followed by so many other studies that explored the impact of doctors criticizing other doctors. It resulted in higher levels of patient distrust and physicians in general. For the previous physician and yourself, so avoid this. The doctor-doctor relationship is a professional thing and very important. Look at this, the relationship between doctors are more important than, the colleague is more important than patient. Think of a five days old patient and a 15 year old colleague with whom we have longer innings yards. So don't criticize a colleague to please the patient and relatives. This shortcut is very dangerous and the word always pays. Remember that. Respect the referring doctor, law number seven. The referring doctor or person should be respected and should be involved in all decision making. Referring doctor knows more than you. Referring person knows more than you about the family background, their economics, their culture, their behavior, background, etc. And I honestly confess, a couple of times in whatever situation, the referring doctors came to me and he saved, uh, he became my savior. So communicate them effectively and take help if required. We don't know when things can go wrong. Then the other clause is uh, be professional, keep a safe distance. This is very important. Do not involve yourself emotionally with the patient or a relative. It's a big book picture. But emotional attachment with the patient or caregiver can affect your unbiased clinical acumen. So don't be you know, quite involved very personally. You are a professional person. Also, don't give false hopes. If the patient is sick, critical, it is critical. You have to say in an optimum way, but you can't underplay that. At the same time, I remember one important statement of Professor Single, over kindness is counterproductive. Be very careful. Don't be over kind to certain unknown people that can ruin your career. So be very careful. Be professional, always respect the privacy of patients. Matters of life and death, terminal care, brain death, and withdrawing life support to be treated with utmost care and also science. I think Rup and Sudhir are doing a very great job in you know teaching modules with this. And I think we should follow that. If given opportunity to save life, thank God. But if within my power, life has to be taken, this awesome responsibility must be faced with great humility and awareness of my own frailty. This is what is professionalism. Above all, I must not play God. Many people come and tell, Dr. Sahib, I'm God, you are God to me, or like God. No, I say, I don't play God. You are not God. The law of God says, patient is the God, knowledge is the God, you are not the God. And don't fall into this trap of you know playing God. 
be professional keep a safe distance you know the medical profession is going lot of you know changes it is a metamorphosis in my time only in 32 years i have seen the noble profession has uh, changed to simple profession it is reduced to profession then in last 15 years it has become business and now it has taken a shape of industry offering jobs to doctors we are now you now paid servants we are healthcare workers so be very careful stakeholders in healthcare are patient doctor hospital authorities and this is not the purview of my today's subject but this is something which all of us should be very careful how to handle situations handling the pandemic of mass casualties handling the corporate people handling the mob violence allegations of misbehavior molestation unexpected death death on table so you have to be very prepared you get trained for all this untold situation handling media is another big headache political persons handling civic civil officer handling difficult patients these all are to be learned and we don't have enough time to go into details then we, ninth law is keep written records records are primarily intended to support patient care and should authentically represent each and every consultation including by telephone teleconsultation is coming the big way we have to learn all this keep records of discussion video recording record keeping caregiver signature etc etc and uh, enough cannot be said here it's such a vital thing right legibly include the date and time avoid abbreviation do not alter an entry or disguise and it's an don't make uh, unnecessary commands check the dictation also so medical record keeping we require a lot of sessions on this very important it is a medical legal barrier be tax savvy learn tele medicine so for most important thing is besides your clinical skills there are four things that define protect you from medical legal problems there are communication documentation communication of documentation and documentation of communication i think they are self explanatory each of these four are equally important and we can't afford to miss please remember that things or events which you cannot prove have never occurred so with all these nine laws if i do not violate these oaths oath of uh, hippocratic oath of charak may i enjoy life and art respected while i live and remember with affection thereafter may i always act so to preserve the finest tradition of my calling and may i long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help and this is what our stalwart teachers that i mentioned they have been doing all this life but there is still something more to this the hippocratic oath requires physician to act to benefit the sick and keep them away from harm and injustice prior no sir but the oath says nothing about patient's right and physician's well being and i am here to tell you the 10th commandment or 10 golden rule you see take care of your health friends and respect your family time lifestyle changes diet exercise manage your time etc very very vital personal health and hygiene you know take time for your hobbies balance your family time nurture friendship maintain good morals life family life friendship hobbies health i can't over emphasize the importance of all this just by being a successful physician or a great physician your things are not over excellence demands this personal note also maintain good morals great character appropriate financial health is important take time to meet your chartered accountant your investor guide and do proper management of financial health take care of legal revenue political media implication friends attitudes have shifted self care is now considered a core competence as physicians are expected to demonstrate a commitment to personal and sustainable uh, practice so health and sustainable practice my generation people many of us were riding on seven horses clinical practice teaching admin academics lectures researches medical positions now webinars and this was very exhausting journey for younger guys i would suggest 
the admin and medical positions, etc., are optional. Think over if you can manage, fine, otherwise, forget them. Balance that with your family life, your health, and social responsibilities and daily essence. Physicians heal that. <laughs> life is more important than money. If you have life, you can make money. If you have lost some amount of wealth, you can regain it if you work hard for it. But you have lost your health or life, no money can get it back. And if you have lost a family member, you will not regain, you will repent. So pay attention. Your own health, who can guide you more than myself? Balance your schedule with exercise. Take care of diet and exercise, lifestyle. A fit doctor is followed more. Mental fitness. Take proper sleep. Burnt out rate should be prevented because we are having such a massive lifestyle. And take special care during current times like epidemics, etc. And use time as a tool not to Life is larger than medicine. It's okay if you don't know rare disease or genetic syndrome. Let your experts do that. Rather than investing a lot of time and energy on that, invest your energy in experiences, wisdom, relationship, physical health, mental health, personal passions, communication, and happiness. My dear friends, life is larger than medicine. Live life king size. I hope and wish Professor Jinder is here. Another living legend at the age of 90 last year, we were dancing together and this, this swiftness with which he was dancing, my God, I was flabbergasted. And he is a man who, who is a positive attitude for life also and he has excelled in medicine also. So we have to keep happiness our prime concern. As Aristotle put it, happiness is the meaning and purpose of life, the whole aim and the end of human existence. So friends, 10 commandment is health, happiness, family time, friends, and hobbies. And it's time to give back. Those of us who have achieved a little from society at whatever age, 40, 50, 60, if you think it is time to give back, you've already taken enough. Give back to society, teach, share, sponsor, donate, entrepreneurship, so mentorship, etc., and that is the way to excel in life, also. So, friends, at the end of my talk, I once again want to give pay tribute to my great stalwart teachers, Professor Single, the man of wisdom, Professor Varya, man of character, Professor Frank Yas, who taught me intricacies of stroke with the life lessons of kindness and humility, Professor Simon Sharwan London for high caliber scientific research. Professor Marsden, my friend Kailas Bhatia, and Professor Piyusha, Dalal Sahib, and Arusha. All these people, I, I really owe a lot of things in my life. Whatever little I have achieved, I know I have to go a long way, but whatever little I have achieved, I humbly want to confess that these are because of the teachings of these great people. Thank you very much for your patient listening. I'm sorry for the interruption of the internet. That was not within my hands. And thank you for your patient listening. Thank you very much. Very nice. Uh, fantastic, Sudeep. Congratulations. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, Hello. yes. Yeah, yes. I think it is a fantastic talk that you gave me. It gave oh. such a good perspective about so many different things. Thank you. Um, uh, about, uh, Professor Singhal and Professor Arjun Das with us. Professor Arjun Das, sir, are you there? Dr. Arjun Das, sir, are you there? Can you unmute yourself and maybe start the video? And the same for Professor Singhal. The group, please uh, ask Prashant to do, do the needful. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Professor Arjun Das had come, sir. Yes, sir. So nice. so nice to see you, sir. Good morning. And Professor Singhal? Uh, Sir, are you there? Yeah, yeah, Sadisha, I'm very much there. I can see him. I can see him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so there. Maybe, yeah. So it's fantastic that, that these two very senior neurologists are with us today. Because medicine is about experience. And it's not only a science, the experience that you get, as Sudhi told us. So can I request Dr. Arjun Das to tell about his thoughts first and then we'll request Dr. Singhal? Dr. Arjun Das, sir, can you tell me about yes. your talk? Sudhir, it was a fabulous talk. 
I think you summarized what we have gone through, all of us, and all youngsters should go through. Knowledge, excellence in that, but knowledge is not so useful unless we have the wisdom to use it. I remember a Kuramurthy's statement that I, neurosurgery is nothing. I can train a chimpanzee to operate, but will he know when to operate, what to do and what not to do? I think, I think you summarize the main person is the patient. Like Parkinson, you ask him which is the most ability and yeah. we try to help him with that. And we tell him we can't make, I think it was wonderful. Compassion for the patient, I think is the most important. We can't cure all diseases, but we can certainly help them. Thank you. Professor a single sir. Thanks, thanks Arjun. I think uh, you are a living example of how medicine should be practiced with all the compassion. And I think it's extremely important to keep a uh, patient at the center and I think uh, best to put yourself in the shoes of the patient and learn his suffering. Then only you will really experience, you know, what it is happening. And do your utmost for the patient. Be very kind. And I think uh, lead him through. Understand. And also try and understand his family as well. You know, all the circumstances. Yeah, that he yeah, rightly yeah. said, they're very important. Very, very important to understand the patient as a whole. And his family. Yeah, Arjun, you want to say something? Arjun, you want to say something? In our country, I should say. Yes. In our country, family is very important. In our country, they are so emotionally knit. You have to help the family to cope with the illness apart from the patient. Thank you. Otherwise, I think uh, Sudhir has covered most of the points in a very, very lucid style. And I think all the points that he made are very, very important indeed. And I think uh, really I should uh, appreciate, admire, and congratulate him for his great talk. It was a great lesson listening to me. Indeed, very much. Thank you, thank Satish. You. Thank, you, thank you, Arjun. Thank and you. thank you, uh, naturally, to the. I really have seen him in action and how he has really conducted himself with the patient. Really, there's much to learn. As I always said, the teachers have to learn from the students, you know, and they are our teachers, actually. Thank you very much. I think since Sudhir has made me the coordinator, I'll put some of my thoughts uh, and maybe again ask questions from the seniors. You know, we uh, at what stage in medical careers do you think the young graduate should be made aware that this aspect of medicine is so important? I mean, we are all about uh, gaining more marks, more MCQs, post-graduation, continuously worried about the scientific performance. And then if there is time, then we ourselves learn, as you say, after getting into the water, how to deal with patients. So how, how, do, you do, how do both of you think we could bring this in very early on in medicine so that our future doctors become better prepared and better human beings Scientists, they all are very good. There's no doubt about it. So any thoughts on that, uh, Professor Arjundas and Professor Singer? I so this think this Arjun. gets... Arjun, go this, ahead. Uh, yeah, sorry. In this, at least, I think some of us are very lucky that we worked in hospitals with very poor people, like our government general hospital. Poorest of the poor come. Some of these things treating the person who has the disease come from those things where you're cocky when you pass the exam, when you're very cocky when you come to the ward. But those people begin to teach us what compassion is. Something that is learned, not the home-bred, high-class living or our... That, that, but you've got to live through this. It's very difficult to explain. It becomes inbuilt in you, the empathy, the sympathy. When you come across people for whom only God lives or the family lives, we learn. I suppose it's only... Actually, since... I learn it, it's something that you can... Uh, 
Now, you know, Satish, uh, the one thing I'd like to emphasize, I think yes. it is the quality of life that matters, particularly in neurology. Okay. And at least I find on the war round that, you know, people who really, you know, sometimes, you know, making the whole family suffer and start, you know, really go on to the begging term because they've exhausted all the money. Yeah. Mm. And I think it's very, very important. And this is where Roop also has been trying to mention about the palliative care. So we have seen the patient, you know, I mean, we want to save life. But saving life is important, of course. But this is more important to save the quality of life. A person who is completely, you know, remaining unconscious for several times. We have seen that in senses, I think, uh, all over. So I feel that this also aspect has to be really remembered yeah. that we got to try and save the patient but save the quality of life. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes I jokingly say that if patients were to write books, keeping their quality of life in mind, our books will be only 10 pages. <laughs> All the 2,000 pages that we have are True. scientific material, True. True. which helps them only in part. True. There is one other uh, point that I wanted to make for uh, young medical students. Everyone emphasizes and everyone uh, sort of says that you have to be lucky to have good teachers and good role models. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But also please remember that the role models are good and often they're very they are extraordinary. That's why they're there. So the seven horses that Sudhir showed, all seven going in different directions. Did you note that in that uh, diagram? Each horse goes in a different direction. Research goes in a different direction. Service goes in a different direction. And if you're trying to ride these seven horses with only two feet, you're bound to fall. So I think each medical graduate, when they see, see their idols, they see their role models, who want to be like them, they have to also understand what are their capabilities and where should they focus. And I think having great role models, uh, I have personally been the beneficiary of uh, having had great people like Professor Singhal, uh, Professor Wadia, Professor Katra. But I've also appreciated somewhere along the line that they are so good that everything that they do, I will not be able to do. So I have to know what I can do. So each one of us has to, like Sudhir said in the last slide, know himself or herself to know what they can do best and try and excel in that area. Don't try it all the seven horses. Can you make a Any point? Please, please. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Please finish first. Kindly finish first, then I'll take. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So I think uh, there are two, three more important points. In those times and current times, there are a lot of differences. One is that Medicine was not this huge. Even neurology was not that huge. So the capacity of human brain and the physical you know, limitations are now coming in the way of understanding medicine. I cannot be subspecialist in many branches. I have to depend. So interdependency has come, which was not so because the volume of neurology or of any branch, even for medicine, was not that high. So one used to pop up. Second thing that these hassles of media, the malign patients and all other hassles have propped up in last 20, 30 years in a much larger scale than before. And apart from that, there are certain other factors also, which are, you know, and now we have understood that uh, health, quality of life, and uh, family time and other things required to be balanced. I think the attitudes have shifted and I entirely agree that what these grand masters could do, we would hardly be able to, you know, play in our lifetime. So we have to take our own base and whatever best we can do, we should do. No, no, Sunni, what, what I'm saying is everyone should introspect and find out what, what he can do well. See, all you know, they may be able to do better than their predecessors, but they have to know what, what should they change. Don't just blindly go on doing what the teachers did just because they did so. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So are there any audience questions to take? I don't see any. Are there any audience questions? Can I, can I, can I share yes. something? Sir, please, please. Please, sir. Yeah. 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 One of the most neglected part. Yes. Uh, which should be in passing is the health of the doctor 
and the family of the doctor. I have seen in my life the most neglected people in the doctor's sphere is their family. You realize that only when you lose a member. That my God, I've been only working. Like I can tell you about my life. I have children. I never saw them growing up, working all the time, which is wrong. And only when you lose a family member, you realize, my God, had we spent enough time, or did we look after them? Well, second thing is the health. You work. Work so hard as a student, as a consultant. Then sick all the hard work that you have every right to enjoy. You don't have the health to enjoy. I think my very important message is that youngsters should invest in health so they can live long enough to take care of themselves and their family. The second thing is. You should never, never replace family with work. I have gone through this. I can tell you from personal experience. Family is very, very important. Looking after the health of the family, spending time with the family, increasing your bonds in the family. This is something that is going away among doctors. They work sixteen hours, eighteen hours. You come home, you are tired to do anything. I think it's very important that we we teach the youngsters what they should not only learn from what we have learned, our knowledge, but this one what we have all missed. Please do not miss family time, please, and build your health. Health is not built at the age of seventy. Health is built when you are a student. Sports, games, time to give you enough health to enjoy. Results of your hard work. Please, please, health and family. Very well said, sir. There's a manuscript that I'm working on. The title is "Practice of Medicine is Injurious to Health." So <laughs> I think oh, a yeah. lot of things. Maybe uh, not your health, your family's <laughs> health. <laughs> that is worse. You can tolerate your mistakes, but somebody else suffering because of you. Tolerate your is mistakes. Not yeah. Very correct, okay. Doctor Meda Oak has asked that uh, this uh, this sort of communication skill should be part of the medical curriculum, to which I think we all entirely agree. It should come up very early on. Any other audience questions uh, to take, Jagru? Uh, Doctor Kishor. Ah, sorry, sir. Uh, Kishor. Kishor yes, sir. Else? There is some questions into the Q A section. One question right. has been asking okay. about the morale, sir. If the patient has come up and uh, to the neurologist and he came to know that this is not a case of neurologist, but it need to be get referred to the ortho. So, as a moral, should he take the piece or not? No, if you drop. Yeah, he can pass it on to the consent specialist. Yeah. So, we we are a little over time, quarter past twelve. So. Are there any other thoughts from Professor Singhal, Professor Arjun Das, uh, Sudhir, or any one of the attendees? We can take them in a minute or two. Otherwise, we can close. Sir, you want to say something, Doctor Arjun Das? I think it's been all well covered. Perfect. Thank you very much, Satish, and thank you, Sudhir, and thank you, Arjun, of course. I I really want to thank all of these living legends and those teachers who brought us to this level. And of course, thanks to Satish, my good friend. Thank you very much for uh, uh, arranging this session. Thanks to Intaf and uh, also the participants. Uh, it was a wonderful listening to the legends, and the remarks were really excellent. Thank you very much. A small vote of thanks from my uh, uh, vice minister and Kiran. I will give a small note of uh, vote of thanks. Yes, sir. Very good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm uh, happy to meet today uh, Professor Singhal, sir, Professor Arjun Das, Doctor Professor uh, Stish Kadilkar, and uh, Doctor Professor Sudhir Shah. It was really wonderful lecture, sir. And uh, I thank you all the participants for attending this exceptional webinar. Why I'm saying this exceptional webinar? Because pearl of wisdom is shared with today. Come from the treasure chest of 
uh, the one of the finest neurologists in India, Dr. Professor Sudhir Shah. And it is said that uh, uh, knowledge comes from learning, but wisdom comes from experience. It is the wisdom that helps transform our experience into expertise. So I think that uh, we couldn't find, uh, cannot find better than Dr. Sudhir Shah, who can who can give us uh, uh, desired burning. Uh, I should say that. Uh, wisdom experience and learning from his practice and uh, dr shai is someone who is always uh, contributing to the society in general and he is very active socially also so thank you very much sir for your priceless time and wisdom which you have given to around 300 participants i would like to thank you uh, professor dr sadish kadalkar for sparing his valuable time i know his time is very precious and uh, as usual his calm and composed demeanor helps us in learning more and more dr uh, b s singhal and dr arjun das thank you very much sir i am able to see you after long time through webinar hope soon we'll see each other through seminar also so thank you very much once again for all the participant i am sure you will take away these 10 uh, golden rule of practice and you will implement in day to day practice so that your footfall of patient is more and uh, your patient they will have quality of life life and quality of treatment after hearing this lecture so this lecture can be forwarded to you if any one of you want please write to intas medical team we will we will happy to share this lecture so that you can also uh, i should say that train your uh, fellow colleague in times to come thank you once again sir thank you very much sir i am blessed i am blessed having four legend in this uh, webinar special webinar dr singhal dr arjun das dr khadilkar and dr sudhir shah last but not least my big thank you to my intas team who has relentlessly working towards this successful of, success of this program and the group and his team medical and his team and we will have such more organize uh, more seminars in time to come so that we can spread this type of light across country thank you very much sir thank you everyone thank you sir thank you, thank you. Thank you very much Thanks, sir. My pleasure, sir. Sir, very good afternoon.